Growing the Future podcast is brought to you by Eberhardt Egg Solutions. Join us as we talk to top entrepreneurs about their methods of obtaining success in their endeavors. And now, your host, Dan Eberhardt. Check one, two, check one, two. All right. Is it too dark? I don't know. I guess we'll depend on it. We got to see what your camera does on your on your computer. You guys need some natural light or I could swing you over a light. We got lights here. You got lights, like in general? Yeah. We're full movie production producers here. Isn't that isn't that your motto, keeping the lights on in businesses across the West, man? <laughs> okay. Keeping the lights so on. this is the Dan we've got today. <laughs> I've got lots of night. endorphins going on for free. You have endorphins going on for free. I could be hawking endorphins on the street here and actually make some money. How are you doing that, buddy? Just just feel good interactions you with other love. human beings. You in love. Well. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <Busted>. <laughs> You can see the glow. You know, I was talking about that with a friend, and maybe you guys can help me out. What is the deal with it when it rains, it pours? And this is anything in life, but I think it's specifically true in dating. So, you know, you can have vast stretches of periods in the desert. You're wandering, your mouth is dry, you know, there's sand in your eyes, and you're like a Bedouin, you know, without a camel, and there's no oasis in sight. And then all of a sudden you're like at this huge like desert oasis palace and you're just partying up and there's a swimming pool and there's like, um, you know, sh- fruity, sugary drinks and there's lots of cool people. Like it's, we can go through vast stretches where nothing's working or nothing's clicking. And then all of a sudden it's like you have trouble deciding on the finer things in life because it's just, it's so plentiful. What, what is that phenomenon? You wouldn't know one side if you didn't know the other. Yeah. That's that's the fundamental nature of the universe, I believe, is, is if you didn't have that dichotomy. No. Nope. No, and we wouldn't get to experience it the way we do. In the crazy up and down. Yep. Next level, right? That's a great point because uh, if it wasn't for the intense pain of being an entrepreneur, how high would the highs be? Where would the true true glory be? And I, there's an interesting book. Um, I would have to look it up later i pay my editor big bucks so he'll just he'll just edit this in but um <laughs> there's a really great book i think it's called willpower i probably have it here in my uh, in my exactly. vast library you know right next to my lambos in the one. but it it talks about is it really willpower is that we put ourselves in a situation that create extraordinary circumstances was lincoln really that great of a born leader or was he just pressed into extraordinary circumstances where you know he he did things that that changed the nation forever huh well you know i think i think we're just drawn to chaos to make sense of it in order to make well, sense of it i love what you guys said in your book what was that oh you want me to narrow it down sure <laughs> You know I you love no. <laughs> well in poor poor Jeff there was like, oh, we wrote that thing in 2012. Like, I'm not sure if I'm gonna remember what uh, what we wrote in it. That's not and what I, I said. Oh, what did you say? I said as we go along and we see the world differently, I may be much more expanded in how I see what we wrote in that book. Oh, I didn't get that memo. <laughs> I thought you said, geez, I hope he doesn't quiz me on what I put in my book. It was in 2012. That's how I took it. But oh, I love I love a lot of the ideas in this book. And one of them was is very specific. And I felt like you were talking right to me, which I'm the most important person to me, if we haven't all noticed that by now. But I actually have it starred here. Um, and maybe you guys can like backfill this uh, narrative a little bit once I once I read this out loud. But it's 
It is at, at those two. No, it is at those points when the physical and mental match that we become bored. Hmm, who does that sound like? It is at those points when the physical and mental match that we that we become bored, and we either consciously or unconsciously create uncertainty in order to allow us to create the mo- motivation to move once again. For example, if you were certain you knew everything about business performance, then there's no way that you'd be reading this book. At some point, just before you picked it up, you let uncertainty creep in, not allowed you to open up to a different way of thinking, which is what continue, continues to motivate you to read on. So I love how you guys are talking about these cycles and these plateaus with, uh, with entrepreneurs where I think you know, we're constantly um, moving to get ourselves into that uncertainty and that uh, degree of uncomfortableness. Um, about that but really you guys wrote this book i don't know you know don't let me uh speak for you but what were you talking about when you wrote that well you know i think it really does come down to a different you know you have to become uncertain i think we're really just here to learn and grow right and uh you know sometimes we i think we attract in or i don't know if you would call it attract in but i think we like to go after challenge and so we'll plant it in our lives right and you know if if you knew every day that you got up and you knew exactly what it was going to be like, it'd be like that old movie of, you know, Groundhog Day and it'd be a little boring. So, you know, I think we, we crave that stuff. I think we crave the drama. I think we crave some of this stuff because that's the only chance we've got to really know who we are. To know who we are. And I think Dan, you know, we've talked about that. Um, The moment you get where you wanted to go, it's no longer enough. And that's the, that's the best and the most fascinating part of entrepreneurs and working with entrepreneurs is it's like that was so five minutes ago and it may have been monumental. <laughs> Let's talk about it, right? Look at some of the stuff you've done in the last six, eight months. And you're right. like, really? I know. And now I'm ready for the next level of uncertainty. In fact, I'm going to create it. You generally do. Like, and that's what I love about you. By 11 a.m. I'm going to make. Actually about 8 <laughs> <for uncertainty>. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I really feel that's, you know, um, an important thing. And I think if you're not feeling fear, you've got to move into that to know that you're you're doing something, something that's going to challenge you. But do you see that a lot with entrepreneurs that they, they reach a certain point of certainty and then they have to physically move back into that uncertainty to fulfill that innate drive of, of entrepreneurship or innovation? Is that common or is no. it just me? Just me. The thing, the thing we hope for in that case, Dan, when we're in talking to entrepreneurs, um, you know, really, I get a lot of this in the present state is that hopefully they're creating a new level, a next level, and you talk about that all the time, rather than tearing their business apart. Yeah. Right. Yeah, the so. tearing the part of the business is is, is not good, uh, according to most metrics, like the bankers and my dad's. <laughs> yeah, so it gets them a little on edge. <laughs> Well, the good news is that I have a chorus of voices in my head now that I can attribute to various amazing advisors in my life. And you guys are the top two that I, I've come to know and love and trust. And uh, I guess we got to back up the truck here and do a little bit of a, a formal uh, introduction or people that are watching this podcast with extreme dedication are going to go, where's Hi. the intro? We're live now? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> We're living in... The, the present moment. <laughs> or are we? Are we? Is it, or is it? <laughs> this is like the Twilight Zone of podcasts. Um, yeah. And I love, I was talking about somebody, was, about, about this with somebody the other day, how I just love the impromptu nature of this and we just start rolling and it's just almost, I think it helps the uh, viewer maybe just feel like they're, there's no fourth wall. They're just fly on the wall. So, but we should back up the truck a little bit and explain a few things. And I was, I was wondering how to introduce you guys, but I wanted to ask each of you the question, like we can, we can put your bio up, we can get the statistics, we can talk about the timelines of what you've done, but what I really want to know, and this is a beautiful platform to do this is who, who are you? Who are you really at its essence? Who are you? And we can, you can talk a little bit about what you do in your company, but who are you guys? Who are you? Well, who are you, Jeff? Really, really, really funny. Yes, Dan. We we had a big conversation on that this week, actually, in our business, right? And I think naturally, I am really curious. I'm always looking for why. Why is it like that? 
um, always wondering and asking people questions about why it is that way for them, how they see the world. And if I saw the world the same as they did, would I have the same results in the same, the same world? Um, but the other side of that is, um, I think something that I bring to the table in the world is consistency and the staying and sticking with it side of the world. And I think in our business, that's been complimentary because Kath is like the change agent that you've. Amen, brother. Change <laughs> agents. Like, right? She's a change so, yeah. Agent. He's a change angel. <laughs> yes. Uh, you He's an angel of change. <laughs> so for me, I think that's been awesome because the uh, same thing in working with Kath, that's, that's both a stretch and a challenge sometimes for me. Um, and, and, and a lot of fun because I do love, I do love new things. I do love learning new things and being stretched to look at new things, but I see the world in a very consistent manner. So I can see how, if something works here, I can see how it works in another situation. And that's been a really powerful piece for me, I think, in business when we get to see hundreds of businesses and the ideas they're using. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think that's the most one of the most powerful pieces we'll talk about today. That what you guys do for, for business is you, you provide visibility from the exterior on, on where you're at because you cannot see the little from the inside of the bottle. And I love you guys. When you talk about in the book, you talk about being a dry lander. It's like, hey, buddy, I'm not getting in the boat with you. I got to stay on the shore here to yell at you to paddle the right yeah. way or get yeah. a shorter or longer paddle or improve your paddle or change out paddles or maybe it's the ergonomic design of the boat. But you talk about not getting into the boat with people. You're the people on the shore directing the, the traffic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So who, who are you then, Kathy? We want to know. The fans of Growing the Future podcast want to know. Well, Dan, you know what? I think if I had to describe myself, I am innately a problem solver. So I fundamentally believe there's not a problem you can't solve. Mm -hmm. um, I think if you can get clear on that problem, you absolutely can solve it. And kind of like Jeff talked about is I am usually pretty curious. You know, I, I like to understand how things happen, but I also innately believe in my ability to come up with a solution or to figure it out or... Um, and that's part of why, you know, I, I, I'm pretty fortunate in getting to do what I do because, um, you know, I can create my own problems like we talked about earlier, uh, where I'll go and dig myself out. But I love really complex kind of challenges and, and figuring out how to dig yourself out. And, um, you know, I've had the chance to work with a couple different companies that have had some pretty big holes to dig out of. And I just, I just, I don't know, I wake up in the morning and that kind of stuff, you know, whether it's the change yeah. stuff or whatever, I just, I love having a good challenge to figure out. So I think um, at my core, that's, that's really who I am. I love, I love them the bigger, the better. So. And who, who then is the company as the sum of the two parts of, of you two as partners? Us as a company, I, you know, I think it's Jeff kind of talked about it when he said yeah. that, that, you know, there's kind of a, a little bit of a yin and yang kind of thing that goes on at times, uh, which is, you know, after 11 years has been continues to be just a whole lot of fun. You know, one of us, I'm, I, I will go and totally change things like Jeff refers to it a little bit sometimes as baby with the bathwater, uh, where it's like, I yeah. want to go do something entirely different. Uh, but then he'll come back and say, you know, like, what about this or how, you know, how, and so we have a little bit of yin and yang with us and um, we have a good time. I think, I think what it has enabled is really a big part of what we want to do is bring a lot of value to business owners in their, in their lives. And with the work that Kathy does, the way she sees the puzzle in, and the ability to put pieces together and solve problems. And then um, my ability to stay with it, I think in, in over a longer haul with clients, has really given us, I think, the ability to leverage each other. So Kath can be off in her problem-solving mode in the world um, and, and creating, uh, you know, a roadmap of where a company is going to go. And we have both the ability to help them set that roadmap and where they need help to stay on it, we're able to help them with that as well. Although, um, 
you know, we've really, I think, learned over 12 years that change doesn't have to take a long time. We can do it really, really quickly. We can make changes in, you know, that some people might think take years, right? In weeks or, oh, yeah. or you know, sometimes days, right? So that's the, that's the stay with it, the move through it. And, but the clarity of the picture at the end is, is what drives that. You know, Dan, I think, I think part of the, part of the magic in, in the work that we get to do is, is I think Jeff and I both are inspired a lot of times by uh, the business owners yeah. that come in and that we get to meet and we get to talk with, and sometimes we get to work with, but each one of them has such a unique story. And, you know, I, I don't think there's everybody in the world that's willing to go jump off a cliff and go and start a business. And you know, put everything that they've got into creating something that there's no guarantee on, right? (laughs) Like, you know, you know, sometimes you're, you're awake at like 11 o'clock at night and and then you're awake again at two o'clock in the morning going, how do I do this different? How do I get it better? And, you know, we get to go and we get to meet with these guys. And, and I think the really cool thing is, is that between the two of us, my beliefs about, you know, what we can accomplish and and problems that you can solve is it, it kind of creates this fun synergy, even with our clients in terms of you really, what is possible? Um, I love entrepreneurs. I love that business owner because they got into this because they went, I think there's something bigger possible. And, um, And no sooner than they're getting there, they're dissatisfied. Yeah. <laughs> totally. It's like, you know, they accomplished something massive and great. And then they're like, mm, no, what? No. You know, yeah. next level. I'm not like that at all. At all. Am I like, no, no, <laughs> no not at all. You're really boring there, man. <laughs> I noticed a certain pattern here when you guys literally started ignoring my new ideas. Cause it's like, we're not even done processing the old things that Dan was working on a couple of weeks ago. And, uh, Perfect. Just ignore my ideas. <laughs> um, well, you know what, Dan is is the reality is is, is that we, that we need like people like Jeffrey once in a while to keep us like keep us like going. Listen, I'll qualify every one of those questions, every one of those new ideas this way: is do you want to make money? I know. Or, for whatever client it is, is what's their most important driving piece, right? And I know for you, Dan, money is only part of the equation so that you can build a company. Um, There's a, yeah, yeah, a community. Um, And, but the questions around new, new ideas, I always say that with entrepreneurs, your job is to go find new ideas. Yeah. And then our job is to help you qualify them, get clear on them and put them into an executable strategy so you can go next level. Isn't that what it's all about? Nobody's ever asked me for more ideas, to be honest. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I pay you guys the big bucks. <laughs> no, and it's, it is really encouraging because I think for a lot of entrepreneurs, it can be really lonely and you can have ideas, but if you bounce them off everybody on your team while they're literally on the ice, they're not maybe, you know, passing the puck or hitting the puck the way they should be towards the net. They're thinking about what you've been, you know, talking about line shifts and different uniforms and all kinds of brilliant ideas that entrepreneurs have. But you guys are a tremendous uh, filter or, or sort of, um, you know, percolation uh, tank for a lot of entrepreneurial ideas before they ever get to the team or the customer where you can sort of say, well, that's good or maybe not so good, eh? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I think it comes back down to um, we all know that really success happens in the focus, right? So, you know, we get caught up in this idea of lots and lots of ideas but it's only really uh, success comes in actually being able to execute. Right. So you can have a really great idea. It's like, it's kind of like you, you know, let's talk about a podcast, right? There's, there's thousands of people out there that think about doing a podcast, but it takes a certain amount of focus to actually, you know, go and do what you're doing. Like getting guests on the, like, you know, getting a mic, that really cool mic that sits in front of your face. It's super cool. You can board it if you want. It's, uh, (laughs) It's super cool. But it takes that focus, right? It doesn't happen by accident. And then it's the consistency in, in letting it actually, you know, come through and actually build a a base of followers and it doesn't happen day one. And so, you know, for a lot of entrepreneurs, they can have, lots of people have great ideas. 
Uh, I always think an entrepreneur is willing to take the idea and is actually willing to tangibly execute and take action and, and to, to go through the goods and the bads. Because as much as we think on the front side, a good idea is a good idea. And we don't really know it's good until like we talked about, until you have the dichotomy where you have to go through the challenge and to making it happen. And, and if you're willing to kind of bear through the challenge and be consistent and do those kind of things, then you're going to, you're going to get success. But, you know, doing one thing, you know, doing one thing and never really getting to the executable stage, you'll never really know whether your ideas are any good anyway. So. It's a really interesting dynamic because uh, there's no shortage of ideas, but the energy to execute them and put them in a certain framework. uh, I find that's what you guys can do. You can flesh that out. You can develop a strategy and then I go to execute it with it requires so much less energy. Uh, it just becomes a simple mission that you send me out on as a soldier in my own company, you as the general, you know, uh, if you've got to be the soldier in the mission, it's pretty hard to be the general in the mission as well. Unless you're schizophrenic, then you can be the soldier and the general and the medic, <laughs> you know, and the president, you know, but I don't have that particular, uh, um, you know, I, I don't know if it's an opportunity or a challenge, but <laughs> I'm a little schizophrenic at times, a little, little ADD, but <laughs> um, guys, take me back uh, a little bit of your history of working together. Like how did you form this partnership and, and just take us a little bit through your, your work history and the different things that you did, the stuff that worked that didn't work and, and to where you got to today with Sierra helping all these businesses succeed. Can I start? Sure. Um, well, it goes a little bit like this. Kath didn't realize it at the time. Um, I joke with her all the time. I'd went to work for a manufacturing company in production. Um, and Kath was plant manager at the time. And I walked up and introduced myself and she thought I was a suck up really literally. <laughs> she didn't realize at the time I was going to complete first impressions, completely transform the operation. You're not a schmoozer, Jeff. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> fast forward oh yeah. gosh that was probably 17? pushing 17 18 years ago yeah, Chloe. uh yeah oh wow longer than that ago 20 18 years ago probably yeah. so yeah. um as part of that i think at the time as we were both all over the place we had come or worked in companies that required us to be all over and and working hard and Working hard, I mean, putting in lots of hours and having a lot of fun going through some really cool transitions and changes. And we transitioned through a couple of companies at the time and ended up at the same companies. And on a Sunday, as I walked into the office and Kathy's in the office, and this job was going to be the slowdown job. And we're now doing 60, probably 60 plus hours a week in that job. That was a slowdown job. We looked at each other and went, well, apparently it's not the job. Hmm. Actually, it kind of went something like this. It was kind of like, um, you know, we've been, yes. we've been working together for quite a long time. We've kind of followed each other a little bit. And uh, I said, you know, like, I think what we should do is we should have a pack that if one of us is going to leave, we should give the other one like a year's notice. And, <laughs> uh, and, and, and at that point, Jeff agreed. And he said, yeah, I sure. think that'd be a good idea. And then at, like the next sentence was, yeah, this is my one year notice. Um, <laughs> cool. So after that, I think it was about probably about a week later, it was kind of another conversation where it was, well, you know, what do you want to do? And funny enough, we both had very much this, this thought, this idea that had been around for a long time that we wanted to start our own business. Um, each one of us wanting to start our own, like our individual ones. And so then it was probably about a a month full of discussion of where it was kind of like, well, what would you want to do? And what would you want to do? And Hey, do you want to, do you want to take the leap together? And uh, that's really, we started off in Jeff's garage in his house. Um, Probably like lots of little tiny businesses, not fully knowing what we were going to do, but um, we're committed to trying to figure it out. Do you guys have a water cooler in the garage where you could like get together and gossip about, you know, what was on television or what was happening in the neighborhood or in the garage? Yeah. We, we had a coffee pot. Coffee pot. Yeah. Coffee pot. <laughs> coffee pot. I love your office. I love your office. Um, 
So it wasn't that long ago that I walked into your office, half a block south of office. my office, which I never knew, knew the land of execution was so close. The kingdom of execution was so close for so long. And um, I kept getting referred to you. Uh, I get lots of good free advice from a lot of people. And one of them, you know, is my first wife. God bless her, Sheila. Sheila Gonti, who her and her husband have a, a tree cutting business and a construction business here in Brandon. They've been working with you guys for a long time. And every time I bitch about the business, Sheila would say, ah, just go see Kathy already. <laughs> so, it was, I remember distinctly, and I'll probably never forget, um, and cue the piano here, because I think it's a poignant moment, but it was around September 11th on my birthday last fall when uh, we had some dramatic changes in the business. Mm -hmm. And uh, we weren't sure which train tracks the train was on anymore. And, you know, I was pretty beaten and broken. You know, I, it was, uh, we've had a lot of challenging times in the business. One thing I struggle with is everybody looks at our business on social media and just assumes that we make it look easy. Right. <laughs> you know, or we, we always highlight the high, you know, the positive things. I think we've all come to understand that about social media, but from the outside, it looks like things are always perfect and always great, but we've had some serious challenges in September. We had, we had some, it was kind of a low point. Um, and I remember walking down, you know, just praying that, you know, I was walking down the sidewalk, just praying that you would have time. I think my first sentence was like, I hope you have time for me because I need your help right, right now. <laughs> like triage, like, you know, I hope you're half EMT, half business advisor because I'm bleeding here. You know, I was, you know, but I guess, I guess I was just wondering, Kathy, what your first impression was when I walked into your door and, you know, the second part of the question, I'm sure Jeff will jump in at some point. Is that, is that the circumstances under which a lot of your clients come to you when they reach that? that breaking point and know something has to change and they need help or do clients come to you and they're normally pretty healthy and just help, help enhance them. So, um, you know, Dan, I'd love to tell you that we see more of them just come in because they want to get to something different. Cause that's, you know, ultimately what we want. Um, we want to see business owners succeed. We do. But yeah. unfortunately uh, it generally is when they have kind of got to the end of their rope. They're not really sure what to do. And um, I think kind of for two reasons. Number one is, is innately, I think business owners have this mindset that I got to figure it out. I got to figure it out on my own. I'm not successful if I don't figure it out on my own. If I just work harder, if I just work longer, uh, there's going to be some magic coming around the corner. And so they put a lot of pressure on themselves. A ton of pressure on themselves. And then when something happens, there'll be some pivotal moment, kind of like what you had go on, is all of a sudden it's like they'll open up and go, okay, maybe, maybe, maybe I can, maybe I can look at it a different way. And the thing that I always laugh about, Dan, is like we have clients that are like five, six, seven, eight years with us and who sit there and go, like, I don't know why I waited so long. And we're just stubborn buggers, man. Like people are, can sometimes be pretty stubborn. So, you know, the day you came in, um, it was awesome. You know, I yeah. think. Uh, yeah. Oh, I, I want to jump in there because. <laughs> it wasn't right even there. there. <laughs> and right there. What happens is with a situation where you come in with a m massive problem to you and Kath goes, Oh, let me have that. <laughs> he loved it. I was yeah. like, this woman's so, my angel. Like, this is my guardian angel. Yeah. The thing at that point is um, innately in what we do in so many opportunities is, is and, I, and I always trust, I, it's a funny thing because I just, I look at Kathy at points on these front ends and I go, what do you think? And as soon as she goes, this is what we need to do. I go, okay, we got this. Yeah. And there is literally, we don't see the problems the same way. We see them as opportunities. And I know Kath does such a good job of that. But there is, I believe, and you could speak to this, Dan, is on that front side, when it gets that tough, quickly it becomes, okay, maybe it's not that bad. Mm. Okay, maybe we can get out of this. Um, here's some of the solutions that are being generated to get out of this. And quickly we start getting momentum and get out of that. And that takes... I think a ton of pressure off 
you know, the business owner, not only in the business, but in all other areas of their life. And the change becomes and the results become easier and easier. And I think the, you know, like you said, you get to generate ideas rather than dealing with issues every day. And I think that's- I've gotten to deal more in my unique ability than ever. I think that's been one of the greatest gifts that you guys have brought to our business is um, you're clearing the path. You're recognizing the unique ability and you're clearing the path to make that happen. And that's very important for business owners. And if I could have one good thing come out of this whole podcast with you guys today for, for people out there that are struggling in their business and not knowing the way forward, um, maybe, maybe it's uh, you guys that can help, or maybe it's somebody else, but you know, find, find a coach, find somebody that can help you. That's looking in on the situation. Cause I think you're right. Most of the time, the problem isn't as big as we, as we think it is. And yeah, we had some big challenges, but Kathy, your coaching to me was, listen, it's not going to be easy. You know, it's not going to be just a slice of cake or whatever the expression might be. But the reality is that it's maybe not as bad as you think it is. And, and the, the thing that I hold in my mind working with you guys is until you guys wave the white flag, we're right. charging, we're charging, oh, we're yeah. charging down the hill. Yeah. We're, we're William Wallace down the hill until you yeah. guys wave the white flag. Right. Yeah. Just agree with me. <laughs> you know, uh, absolutely. You know, I, but I said, th- I think, you know, and I want to go back to the very first day I met you. Cause I, I think this is really, really important point is, and I, and I think this is why we continue to respect what you guys do. Um, your whole family does. Uh, and what you do with your community is, is from day one, there's a level of being authentic. Yeah. And I think whether, you know, I don't care who you are. There is not a business owner and including Jeff and I who haven't faced tough challenges and who haven't necessarily been certain which way to go or what to do. Uh, there's no nice magic recipe book. And, you know, day one, you walked in here and you said, you know what, I got a big problem and I don't really know how big a problem it is. Um, I, I, I know that I, I can't solve it. Um, I'm really hoping that you can help me, but uh, I'm going to solve this and I have a lot riding on this and I'm willing to do what it's going to take to make it work. And, uh, you know, right from day one, I think it's not about, but, you know, I think it's, I think it's too easy to put on this, like, it's going to all be okay. It's going to be this, it's going to be something and, and not and to kind of, in fact, lie to yourself. And I think, when we get those situations yeah. with business owners where they come in and it doesn't matter. Like it doesn't mean to me, you know, pro- and you read it in the book, I believe problems and opportunities are structured exactly the same way. So, you know, a lot of times, like I said, people come in with a problem, but I, you know, I hope they also come in and look for the opportunities as well because they are structured exactly the same way. And um, when they're authentic about what they want to achieve or what they want to get away from, then it's pretty simple to solve it. But is that the first step is getting authentic and, and, and accepting where you're at? Yeah, I think so. You know, uh, I know Jeff talked about it at the, uh, trusted applicator summit. You know, it, we look at it in terms of the gap, right? If you can get clear where you are and if you sit there and even the good, the bad, the ugly, whatever it is, all in say, this is where I am and get clear on where you want to go. It's pretty simple to solve it. But so how it, are problems and opportunities structured the same? Tell me more about that. Well, basically when you think about it is um, a problem is a set of beliefs. So if um, you know, like say, let's say I'm, I've run out of money. Right. And if I hold a belief in my head that, you know, uh, the bank's not going to give me any money if um, I hold a belief in my head that I have no ability to actually generate any more cash, if I believe that, um, you know, the, the all my loans are going to get called in, if I believe all of that kind of stuff, right, I get stuck. And so it's not necessarily true. You know, um, people will say, well, you know, like, I, I can't make any more money. Well, yeah, actually, you can. We all have the ability to make more money. Uh, you know, we might have to do something different, but we all have that ability. 
And so, you know, an opportunity, we build this magic around these opportunities and say, well, you know, I think it's going to be great because of this, 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 and this. And it's just really in how we choose to build them. A problem for you may not be a problem for me. Um, there's people like, yeah. if we go back to 2008, there was people that thought that, you know, the sky was falling, like the, the economy was going to crash and we we're all going to lose our homes. Big problem and- for a lot of people, but there was a lot of people that made a lot of money. And so it crash. really comes down to really questioning what you believe. And I think that, that authentic, like being authentic and really sitting and saying like, is this a good belief for me to hold? Um, cause sometimes the beliefs that we have really will mess us up. Got this really is one of the it. areas, sorry, I let you finish here, Jeff, but this is one of the areas I'm most interested in having you guys coach me on is literally changing my beliefs. Cause I've had these lifelong beliefs that have led me to this certain place that I've repeated them like ad nauseum, sort of like old <laughs> worn out cassette tapes for anybody who remembers cassette tapes. I mean, my cassette tapes are kind of worn out and it's the same freaking song. I need a new mixtape you know, to put in that girl's locker, you know, anyways, that's a high school thing story, you know, <laughs> I put mixtapes into girls lockers in high school, but um, no, I think we need to change the mixtape in our head. And I want you guys to coach me uh, so that I, 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 I feel like making money is possible, uh, you know, on a level that, you know, I didn't understand before because, you know, in our business, we're networking with people of a higher and higher worth. Um, and it's kind of like what to me seems like, a really big deal to them is not. And it's like, like a t-shirt I saw on Grand Cardone the other day, you can fake the Lambo, but you can't fake the jet. So, I mean, you guys are helping me think of what's, what's possible. And I think that's happening every day in that, Dan. And that comes in asking the right questions. It really comes in asking the right questions. So, um, you know, anytime someone's in a present state, of where they are and they want to change it. Um, the, the example I had ye- uh, yesterday, most recent example with a client, um, four years ago, we had a discussion when they came in on, there was su- just a, a situation where they came in and went, do we keep this business or do we close it down? And they were literally in a situation where the debt they had on their business, they would never recover from. They couldn't get jobs that would ever have them recover. And I said, there's only one option here, folks. There's only one option. If Very you want true. to restore your life is to go back to work and figure this out. Yeah. And over four years, they've had some struggles with cash and growth. They've they've grown, they've they've doubled, double, double, almost tripled. Almost tripled now. Their top line. Their top line and are creating a bottom line. And they're they're feeling the cash. It's this that time of year where they're coming into heavy swing and they're feeling the the pinch on cash again this spring. And when we looked at their year over year debt to equity ratios, they're finally whole. I looked at them yesterday and I said, you can sell your business today and have money. (laughs) Why would we do that? Exactly. So for me, when you talk about those things, there's, there is a migration in belief and some that one day you go, Oh my God, we're moving, but it's also where are you focusing? See, they're still feeling the cash challenges but not realizing what they're growing the assets they're building and so sometimes i think we do a really good job of bringing back focus to look what you've created yeah look what's happening and from that comes massive momentum and and when you have massive momentum it opens up your thinking dan you call a blue sky and you start to think about bigger and more possibility and what you know you start to really stretch the world and that's where we get really excited is how do you stretch the world and make it bigger? Well, I think there's a certain cycle there, and you probably probably see it from the day somebody darkens your door to Q1 or Q2 or year two results where you can say, hey, we're now proving you a cycle of success here. Mm-hmm. Are you ready to believe me on the next thing? Yeah, and I think sometimes, um, you know, when you talked about the, when we talked about the belief, I think you also have to understand whether the behavior is matching the belief. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I think it's really simple to talk a belief. So, you know, it's kind of like the, you know, there was a, that whole law of attraction thing that went on for a lot of years. And people the thought, you know, oh, this yeah. is why I have the podcast, because it's easy to talk about it. <laughs> so, you know, if I just sit there and I just think about it, like somehow it'll come in. And um, 
you know, it's, it's kind of like sitting there and saying, you know, I, I, you know, I want to make a whole lot of money and then sitting on your couch and watching television. Like I've never really seen an equation where you're going to make a whole lot of money sitting on your couch and watching the television. But what uh, if it's like the season finale of Game of Thrones? Does that count? Hey, I'm good with the season finale of Game of Thrones. Just understand you're probably not going to make any cash. <laughs> but you might have a really good time watching Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> you might learn something about business, you know, in the Seven Kingdoms, some of the uh, parables. But <laughs> I just wanted to say that so I can specifically put gifts of the dragon with that blonde in there. Just... Just oh, that was that, with this? That you was. Was. Eagle plan. That's so now we know there's gonna we be got it. gifts. And that's my only preparation for the podcast is like mention Game of Thrones so you can put a gif of, of Daenerys and Daenerys Stormborn and the dragon in there. There you go. You know, and I would like to say this. Um since Dan Eberhardt has come into my life, uh-huh, I understand gifts. <laughs> At a whole new level. I'm even able to use them. Excellent. Well, they are. They're incredibly expressive. And I and I feel like they're being overused a little bit now. But at the same time, it's communicating so much. I mean, to be fair, we're able to communicate in such such interesting ways now. It's uh, Humanity has become really expressive in, in good and bad ways on, on social media. But um, back to whatever we, what we were talking about. Well, one of the things I was talking about, and I actually wanted to tell you a story. Um we were talking about beliefs matching, you know, whether somebody's Behaviors. behavior yeah. actually matches their beliefs. Yeah. And it was cool. funny because Dan, I actually used uh, uh, the video that you had developed for that uh, young egg, Saskatchewan young egg. Okay. So I, I uh, had got, I was in a workshop last week and we we're talking about the whole, you know, does your behavior actually match your beliefs? And I was using the uh, your video, I actually brought up your video from Saskatchewan Young Egg yeah. where, you know, you got up on the table and you were, you were, you know, you were playing guitar and you had your music and everything else. And it was funny because what we were talking about is uh, it was a change management workshop. We were talking about, you know, how do you go ahead and uh, look at fundraising, look at engaging people in an entirely different way, all of those really good things. And, uh, um, anyway, this group was sitting there and they're kind of caught in their same mind thought about, you know, well, what we could do is we could put together like an email. And I said, yeah, but you want to really engage at a different level. So what if you did something like this? And I actually showed your video and it was like unanimously around the room, you know, all of the, you know, the suit kind of tie kind of guys are like, well, we'd never do that. <laughs> right. And, and I, and so I pushed him a little what bit. What did the ladies say? That's what I really want to know. Was there any single <laughs> ladies there? <laughs> Let's litmus test, litmus test the ladies and then get back to the guys. What were you, what were you guys doing? And what, you know, what I said to them, I said, well, you know, do you, what do you want to create? You know, if you want to create something different, you've got to be willing to do something different. And I think that's the thing with beliefs is if I believe that I can't, you know, get up on a, on the top of a, uh, a table and pretend that I'm playing guitar, then, you know, it, can I remotely believe that I can have the same success as you can have where you can walk through an egg conference and everybody knows who Dan is, right? Uh, if I send off my nice little email and keep it nice and safe, it, can I expect that I would have that kind of exposure? And so I think this is where people, when, when we talk about the beliefs and we talk about Habits um, and behaviors. behaviors, I think you have to look at what you're doing. And if you're sitting there and you want something more in your life or you want to change something, and we push up our, our some of our, our um, cl- well, actually most of our clients about stuff like this. You know, if I want to create a great big company, but I'm the one doing, you know, answering every email or I'm the one doing my books or I'm the one doing those kind of things in your company. That's not behavior that supports what you're talking about. Right. So it's got a match. And sometimes we're unaware of you know, some of the stuff that we're doing uh, and sometimes it needs to get, you know, we push back a little bit and say, are you really sure you want that? Because I think our behavior tells more, you know, people can talk anything they want, but I think when you watch somebody's behavior, you'll see what they're really about. So how does our perspective get formed over time? Like how do we accumulate these beliefs? 
Who do you spend your time with? Where did you grow up? And you may have accepted them and you may have rejected them, right? So the basis of who we are becomes largely a part of our growing up, our modeling and imprinting periods. But even later, and, and, and I'll say on the front end of those is, did you accept the values or did you reject them? There's fabulous, you know, stories on both sides. Um, we have, you know, we know a guy who became a, who became a PhD and spent his whole, he talked about, it was a really funny story. Uh, he talked about um, spending 30 years becoming a PhD and learning um, religion, actually, to prove his catechism teacher wrong because she shamed him in front of the group. Mm -hmm. And it became that's such a drive, an internal drive. And later in life, he re he said, it really, that's the day it came, it, it came alive for him. It was never about the content. It was about being right and doing something. So I think as our beliefs, as these situations come on, we take on beliefs that empower us to do those things or to drive those things. And, um, and, and you talked about it, Dan, you always put yourself in situations. And when that's one of the things I love about you is you're positive. You see the world in a, such a positive place and you always put yourself in situations with people who can stretch you. Mm -hmm. And so that's an opportunity to understand when we can understand what some of those people think, what they believe, what's important to them. We can begin adopting and pulling some of those beliefs into our world. And I think that's a big part of, I think if everyone could adopt, could, you know, if, find those pieces, we always tell, tell people, if you want to get good at something, find someone who's done it, yeah. you know? Right. Mm -hmm. Like who are you taking advice from? Right. Yeah. yeah. That's a big deal. Um, so how do you work with somebody that, whose behaviors isn't matching the beliefs that they're uh, espousing? Um, well, sometimes we give them tasks to do that'll go through them. <laughs> Here's um, some homework. <laughs> some homework. Um, you know, the reality is, is it's not necessarily uh, for me to change you. Uh, I don't believe that I can change anyone. But I sometimes I think we're unaware of maybe the behavior we're doing and why. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes, you know, I'm going to give you a story is um, at a business owner uh, this couple years ago, he, he wanted to, he really wanted to take his business to the next level. I know it sounds a little cliche, but he really wanted to double his business. And, uh, he continued working in the field. And so finally we got to the point where, you know, we kind of talked about it and said, you know, like if you're the guy that's the foreman on the field, you know, you're never going to grow. You're never going to do this. And he had a lot of beliefs around, you know, his guys not being able to do it. And, you know, if he wasn't there, things wouldn't be run right and all this kind of stuff. And so finally it was like, okay, well, I'm going to give you a task and will you agree to do it? And he agreed to do the task. So he, him and I swapped offices for a week. So he came to our office for a what? week to do what? his work. He had to operate from our office, never on site, never with his people. He had to operate remotely. This is like well, babysitting a business owner, you which think sometimes so. you do for me. I mean, but I here's know. here was a really funny thing with this is I think I got the good end of the job because I got to go there and I just continued doing what I do. And, um, you know, he got really kind of pissy about it. He was pretty mad. And this happened. We didn't tell him on day one how long it was going to be. So by like the Wednesday, he was pretty pissed off. He was hmm. like, you guys are doing this to me. I was like, no. And he was like, how long is this going to last? And it's like, until you figure it out. And he <laughs> literally went through a temper tantrum for like about four days. And then on the fifth day, um, we finally, you know, he called me and he said, you know, can we talk? And I said, sure. So I went, I came back to the office and he said, like, I think I figured it out. And I said, well, what'd you figure out? And he said, I don't know what I would do if I wasn't in the field. I don't know how to go and generate more business. I don't know how to go talk to the bankers. I don't know how to, I'm afraid that, you know, I won't be successful. I'm afraid that if they don't need me, then I don't know what I am in this business. And that was when we had a really honest conversation because before that, you know, we're solving his foreman problem. He didn't have a foreman problem. 
he had great foremen. He had great guys out there in the field that absolutely knew what they were doing. But this guy had to admit that he didn't know what to do. So that was his excuse, right? That was his excuse for not matching his behavior to what his beliefs were or what he wanted. It's just, just, it's not, it's not, he's not a bad guy, but sometimes that's the stuff that's about getting honest and sitting there and saying like, really, I don't know how to do this. And the best part of that story, Dan, is fast forward. What's that about five, six years now? Yeah, at least. And um, that he's tripled that company. He's got four main divisions with general managers in divisions. And he lives in another country in the winter for a good portion of the winter. So he got out of timeout is what you're yeah. saying. He got out of timeout. <laughs> he, got, he literally got out of timeout. <laughs> Are you going to put me in timeout if I don't behave? Yeah, I, I, I might. I feel like we've had a few timeout moments. <laughs> really? Yo. It's true. It's true. <laughs> it's true. I love it. I love the passion. And I, I think it's important, too, that a business owner has someone that's blunt and courageous enough to stand up. Like, I was just thinking about your level of courage, Kathy, which I know is boundless. <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean... I get to leave. Yeah, get a fucking Game of Thrones. Now, okay. <laughs> if you were talking Game of Thrones, you'd be like one of those queens ready to take over the seven kingdoms, you know, <laughs> on the back of a dragon. But I think you guys are too nice on that one. You listen. One of the one of the uh, one of the important things that we've always looked for, the shareholders always wanted, was someone that, so, or somebody or a team of people that would stand up to me. And I, and I don't know sometimes how forceful I get just through projection of, of my, my desires to move the business forward and my, my passion. And it's pretty hard for a lot of people to contradict that because I'm just like on fire about it, but I might be going totally in the wrong direction. At least you guys can say, Hey, like, look, uh, yeah. And and I, I guess I'm thinking of a lot of people in the farming community, um, because there's just, it's got to be such a challenge. It's got to be such a lonely thing to be out there making decisions in the face of like, they got a million decisions to make. It's really hard to take a step back and, and understand where you're at. I think you hit the nail on the head. Like if, if a farmer is just sort of having an issue with something in his business, I mean, is it really the problem that he thinks or that's is it that's, just that's, that, you know, in this case, the business owner was actually afraid of, of doing a number of things, but I, I'm also curious about this business owner. Like, how did he get to the other side of that? Like, did he just, well, I guess once he recognized the the actual issue wasn't his foreman, it was his fear of handling those higher functioning duties. Was he able to confront that and deal with it because he became self-aware enough? Well, that's the stuff we went and worked on. You know, once he, once he could sit there and say, I don't know how to talk to a banker. We were able to sit there and work on the stuff that would help him feel um, the level of confidence to be able to go in and talk to his banker. Uh, once he said, you know, I, I don't know what kind of business I want to work on. Up until that point, we were working on, you know, stuff that really didn't matter because it was never the problem. And I think when we, t- when I talked a little bit about the um, problems and opportunities are structured the same way, you know, in a moment he can, we can think that a problem, like I don't know how to talk to a banker is a big problem. But in reality, it's the biggest opportunity is if you can go and actually confront that, if you can figure out what you need to learn. And it's not like it's that difficult, but you know, if I ignore it and I don't actually get clear on where I am today, I can wish all day long that I want to get to this better future, but the niggling doubts will hold you back. Yeah. And like spinning plates and um, you know, you know, spinning plates, they suck the energy out of you at night. Oh yeah. Or whenever that might be, right? Right. You can you can bury them, you can cover them. You talk about social media. Social media is a wonderful place for people to see all the best stuff in the world. Yeah. That's going on. Um, and you talked about it for you, even Dan, you know, there's stuff behind the veil. And although I, I that's funny you say that I see you as a pretty you're a pretty authentic heart on your sleeve guy. Yeah. I'm the oversharing, I'm the quintessential oversharing CEO. <laughs> and I know you guys are trying to coach me out of that. But uh, I just love we'll sharing. Sharing is caring. Hey, okay? we'll never coach you out of being you. No, yeah. but I think it is a little bit of a challenge too at times because, uh, you know, being. I think the problem with the leader is seventy percent of the time, 
this is statistically accurate, like incredibly accurate. They actually use a quantum computer to generate that statistic. 70% oh, yes. of the time, leaders don't know, have a, a clue what's going on on the rest of their team's head and vice versa. So, you know, I can come out with a really big idea, but, you know, but I'm just verbalizing it out loud. That's why I love this podcast because I get to verbalize everything out loud and, and talk. I just, I love, I'd almost rather have a conversation with you guys and read your book. I love reading your book. But having a conversation about it to me is really natural and, and functional. Um, but I think the challenge is for the team, like we can have a team meeting on Wednesday morning every week. And Dan just, this is my new big idea. Like you just, the ideas are just being vomited out <laughs> on everybody's shoes. And they're like, what? They don't know what what's the, all in this vomit of ideas. And I will have feel, you know, I feel really like, you know, again, great, like, plenty of endorphins because I've got my ideas across, but everybody's like, are we doing this? Is this a new thing? Is this a maybe? Are we going? Like it just creates so much confusion. So I think I've, I've had to get some coaching not to share everything with everybody all the time because sometimes ideas that seem really brilliant, you know, on the first of the month by the, you know, third of the month, they're like, Oh God, I'm glad I never embarked on that particular disastrous journey. Right. <laughs> but you guys help me. Um, cycle that through that so one th bone i have to pick with you guys though and i've always been meaning to have this conversation so now oh, we can have it live on the internet but like i heard about this like three-day in-depth seminar that you had <laughs> which Phil and john went to for neuro linguistic programming and i never got it you never and got I, it. be like you know tapping and thinking of the ocean and like cycling through my spirit animal here while i like take on almost you know epic superpowers in business what is this course i want this course tell me about you guys have a little bit of a journey in nlp yeah we um that's gonna be like eight years ago both jeff and i became certified uh trainers in nlp and we have from time to time and i'm gonna say from time to time ran various configurations of a training course it really about building, um, it, it's actually a lot of beliefs, mm -hmm. a lot about beliefs, a lot about values, a lot about where you're going, building your compelling future and destroying those things that are in front of you. And every once in a while it comes together and rears up. And um, So what is NLP? Like, I want this course. I can't believe you guys have been withholding this from me. I feel robbed. Neurolinguistic programming is really, uh, it's really the study of the words we use and how they describe the pictures we make in our mind and how we see the world internally and how we reflect that, the behaviors then that we put into play into the world. So NLP from our perspective has been a really great tool oh, yeah. for working with people and understanding that everyone is very similar, but very different. The words we use are so inaccurate in describing the world. Um, so NLP has been a powerful tool for us for unlocking, we'll say performance with people and the thing, how they see the world. You know, I said it down, ask the right question and you'll unlock it. Ask the right question, you'll unlock it. Stay focused on the, on the right, the right pieces for you and you'll get the right behaviors and habits. Um, and NLP has been a big part of that for us. Although we don't talk about it a lot, we know that the tools um, and the thinking as a result of it has been really beneficial. See, I think that's where, you know, while we don't always run the program, like sometimes we'll actually run the course. Um, but where I think the, you know, people ask, well, why are you different than say the, the accountants or different than, our lawyer yeah. or, you know, why should I come work with you guys? Um, and, and when that's one of the things that I think, you know, kind of two things down is number one is, is we had, we have spent years understanding that performance psychology and how to get people to uh, do something different and how to understand how a belief system can impact a business, you know, but the second side of it is, is we've been there, you know, uh, Jeff and I started off in a garage. We have had all the fears. We've had the moments when we weren't sure how we we're going to pay each other. Um, we've come through the other, we've come through the good sides. We've hired staff. We've had our own challenges. Um, so we understand and we've been there. And so on both sides of it is, is 
you know, yes, we're very, very good without a doubt. Um, I'll go up against anybody in my bills, you know, my ability to understand a business, but it's actually an understanding that a business is just a reflection of the person that's running it or the leaders that are running it. That's the scary part. (laughs) Yeah. And if you want your business to grow, it's really a matter of of what beliefs is that leader or the owner have to have. And that's where on, you know, that's where we're different is because we have studied that, that side of it. How do, how do you get someone to believe something different? How do you have them do a different behavior? That's what we see as part of the value. You know, we can go and look at somebody and say, yeah, you're kind of full of shit. Um, and then go and put them into a task situation that has them realize a different reality. And, and that's the combination of the neuro linguistic programming. And yes, we love teaching it. It's, you know, it's certainly workshops that Jeff and I love doing that kind of stuff, but um, you know, it comes down to. Comes down to right time, right place for us often mm-hmm. um, around um, a number of things and where we are in the world. Um, you never know. Yeah, you guys are really busy right now, eh? I sense. Because Kathy won't take my calls, basically, is sort of what it amounts to. <laughs> yeah, actually, we are. Are really... you not taking his calls? No. She didn't tell you? He call me on the right line. He calls on that line when he doesn't really want to talk to you, but he wants to let you know that something might be happening. And then, and then I hear from, like, Graham, and, like, I come into the office, and it's like, Allison's like, oh, I just, Kathy called me. I'm like, really? Because <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard from her. I haven't heard from Kathy in like three months. She's been working on the dealer strategy. (laughs) Now the trade-off is the quality of the dealer strategy. I know it's going to be amazing. Um, And I want people to know, like, I think it's really interesting. The converse, like I'm personally super passionate about the content of this, of this podcast, just to let everybody know that's anyways. (laughs) uh, but, But the reality is that I want people to understand that, this isn't all just soft, warm and fuzzy. Like you guys are hardcore financial analysts, warriors that can take a financial sheet, project cash flows, you know, work out margins, uh, balance things, uh, enhance things. Like you guys do some incredibly concrete work and you have, you talked about it when I first came in because um, there's the entrepreneurial spirit. There's the accountant spirit. If, if accountants have spirits, you know, bless them, but I don't know what you're calling. The mathematical <laughs> spirit of an accountant. And then there's the operator. And yeah. you guys kind of fall in that operator domain, whereas like I'm a I'm a wanna entrepreneur at least, if I could give myself that. <laughs> entrepreneur. I've never heard that one. <laughs> oh, no, I'm doing it. I'm really doing it. But no, uh, so you guys are more on the operating side, but you you integrate all these elements in in such a way that it's like, hey, you can you can actually pay your bills. Yes. This isn't all just uh fancy neuro neuro linguistic programming or feel good stuff changing your beliefs this is making money yeah at the end of the day jeff and i know how hard uh business owners work especially small business owners you know these guys uh you know we see so many times where there's like somebody who's put 30 years 30 years 35 years of their life into growing something and Um, it's tough work. And so, you know, working with us, it's really around, uh, it it really has to be, uh, what more are you going to get? It has to be a different level. Uh, you know, just doing the same thing. I don't know why you, I I don't even know why you can work with us. Um, I don't know that we would actually work with you. If somebody walked in the door and said, I just want to continue doing what I'm doing. Um, why, 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 why would we do that? I think the cool thing too, Dan, what I would add to that, that I really see, and I had this discussion about a week ago with a guy that I was probably going to be watching this podcast and oh, yeah. a great company. They're a fantastic company and have really awesome people working in operations and working in, and it was around financial modeling mm-hmm. and um, had built a model they worked through and we're now a year in and they're reworking it. And um, because, we believe financial modeling is not a static process. It's a dynamic process. It's as dynamic as the people working in it. So um, where we come in is understanding that the calibration between your numbers and how you're operating and is how you're operating today really going to move the needle on those financials. Yeah. What's the change you have to make to move the needle. 
And I, I, I think um, Kathy has a Rain Man ability to link those back. <laughs> Kathy's Kathy's unbelievable. You know? like, and so <laughs> when she does that, right? You got me, right, Dan? She I got, got you, man. And then when we link that in, the, these these changes happen in a business. And what I what I'd say in those situations, as Kathy just said, is when the moment business owners are open to the idea that they are dynamic Mm -hmm. and they are ever changing and there's somewhere in the continent between what they've modeled and where they want to go and constantly moving back and forth um, is when they can harness the power of it that's in the in the numbers to create growth Um, and too too often I think if I could encourage entrepreneurs is to be open to that rather than try to be really right about where they are right A, you know, we get into debates about, well, my overhead's not this. Well, does it really matter? It is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And move forward, right? And I, and I think uh, that's, although one of the powers of an entrepreneur is to be really solid about their ideas, um, we're saying be solid, but yet be dynamic enough to be able to look at the things around you and and trust the really good people around you to tell you operationally, how is this working? And how does that match into my numbers? Well, it was really funny because I had a huge, huge moment of self-doubt at the Sask Young Egg Conference when Murad al who's world entrepreneur, uh, he was uh, entrepreneur of the year of the world. Uh, forget which year, but I mean, they got like a $3 billion business. And he he said... Beyond all the really cool Winston Churchill quotes he gave, and I really enjoyed his presentation, he said one of the most important things that you got to have in business is financial acumen. And this is right before I was going on and speaking. I'm like, I'm sunk. <laughs> like I was, I was like, oh, I shouldn't even be in business. Why am I presenting to these people? Like, can't fight my way out of a wet paper financial statement. But uh, then, you know, in moments of, of darkness and doubt, um, my – my uh, sword that I pull out of the stone is you guys. And I just really feel strongly that um, my, my confidence and my courage going forward is warranted because until we wave the white flag, we're charging. I really, I really like that. And uh, I, it's kind of like, you know, if you got fitness or you got faith, you got health, you got wealth, what happens? You want to share that with people. Right. Yeah. And what I'd like to share with people is that you don't have to be alone and that there are people out there like yourselves, like the ROI that we've gotten on you guys almost instantaneously is like instant noodles, like nuke it for three minutes and just, it's so good. I love instant noodles, but <laughs> you know, it was pretty instant. Right. Yeah. And then there's also like, there's the instant noodles, but there's like the finely prepared seven course meal at the end of the year when it's like, okay, we've actually moved the needle on our company. So it's, it's a combination of uh, immediate triage and long-term treatment. And once for us, I feel like, okay, once we get out of like, we stop the bleeding, you know, we, we triage the, the issue. We got clear about what the issue was, mm-hmm. you know, we're back to health uh, which I think was, you know, nobody's ever really going to know it other than if they watch this full podcast, which is going to be four hours long by the time we're done talking. <laughs> but it was, you know, an exceptional challenge and, and lots that we overcome. But now we're at that point where I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, we're at a state of health, you know, moving towards a state of health. And now we can start being preventative, like exercising, sleeping well, eating right, taking vitamins, you know, meditating, whatever it is that we want to do to improve Cause when you're in crisis mode, you're just, you're just in crisis mode. You're just, you're just, it's fight or flight, baby. That's a hard place. And you probably see a lot of business owners come to you like that. And, and uh, hopefully as you work with them, they get out of that, but you must see a lot of business owners in crisis mode. And, and how does that look to you looking in on business owners in crisis mode? I think they, they're more worried about what we think than what we're worried about the situation. You know um, like I said, you know, we've been there. Uh, we've been through those tough moments and uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, they're just, it's just, it's, it's just something to work through. It's just part of the journey. Right. And, you know, Dan, one of the things I do want to say that I think, you know, you and Terry and Harvey have done such a yeah. great job of is um, a couple of things. Number one is I think you guys 
embrace uh, advisors. Um, you know, whether it's Jeff and I, or whether it's your advisor teams or whatever is, uh, you know, you guys hold a belief that uh, you'll move your businesses or your organization based on the collective thoughts of many. And it's not like you listen to every one of us every time, you know, sometimes uh, even the advisors can be in disagreement about what the next step is, but it's, you know, I think too many times it's easy to get caught up in the four walls of the business that you're running or the cab of the truck that you're in or whatever, and, and not get out, not, not to go and expand what you're thinking. And I'm going to tell you, um, I'm not sure if it's Dean DeGrazio or who said, but it's, you know, information in is, is the information that you have coming into your system is going to be a reflection of the information of what's happened, the output. And if you know you're sitting in the same four walls trying to solve the problem the same old way, you're going to have the same old result, right? And you know you guys have, uh, you know, not only do you engage advisors in your business in terms of growing it, but you actually engage an advisor team to look and to push you, and you listen to what they say, and sometimes you don't like what they say, um, but you know those advisors are there because they want to see you succeed. And I think sometimes we need to have those critics around us a little bit that, that push us and, and kind of get us a little grumpy uh, because uh, especially because they're there because they're, they're, they're there to see you guys succeed. And, and I think that's such a valuable tool. And sometimes <laughs> it's tough to be open. And I think, you know, you, as I said, you guys have are continuing to build a bigger vision uh, when you have, you know, we went to the trusted applicator summit and got to see the network of people that you're building and amazing you know, people. I looked at a lot of those guys that were sitting in the audience and the potential in that room was just crazy. Um, you know, each one of them have, you know, they're, they're going out and, you know, call it, you know, biosol nation. And, and I think that's <laughs> such a cool thing. But, you know, each one of those guys have so much potential to take their business, to take, you know, their, whether they're applicators or dealers to really go and do some like amazing things. And, and that's why I love some of the, you know, some of the vision that you and Terry and Harvey have around, you know, feeding the, feeding the world and, you know, all of that kind of stuff is, is I think there's so many opportunities uh, for everyone to, to really be a part of that. And, you know, I commend you guys for that because it's, it's, it would be a whole lot easier just to sit and do the same thing. And that, you know, you wouldn't have to be on the road as many days as you have to be. And, and I, I, you know, you wouldn't have to go and take time away from your daughter and all those other kind of things. Uh, you know, you guys all work really, really hard. And, and, and for that, yeah, we commend you guys. Absolutely. I, I, you'd say even on top of that, Dan, I want to add, when Kathy talks about the advisors, I do see that in you guys. Your advisory board, I think, was great. I, I got to have the great opportunity to meet with you guys and your advisory board. And one of the things that stuck with me is 14 months ago, the conversation that Larry Hillworth had with you. <laughs> right? And Larry, you're amazing. Larry, but we love you. It, yes. it put a fire. Oh, happy in. birthday, Larry. Yeah, Larry. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. Happy birthday, Larry. I got to reach out to Larry. I want him to speak yeah. at uh, Farm Forum and, and maybe come on the podcast and stuff. But yeah, um, continue on. He put on. a fire in your heart, Dan. He, told you the truth. he put a fire under you. He mm -hmm. told you the truth about the state of your company and not all from an, it's not all an operation standpoint. It's part of the cycle of a business in terms of growth. Some of the right. challenges you went through are the same as any other business owner mm -hmm. would go through. And when you get to be around people that have been there before, they can point those out to you and go, listen, if you don't fix this, it could hurt you. Yeah. <laughs> it could kill you. Mm -hmm. um, you could get the flu from it. And I think that's really a powerful piece. And I, I do commend you guys on that. And even from the work we're doing with you guys, um, some of the, you know, the tremendous experience and that you guys have from your advisory board is a big part of this company and is really moving the needle for you guys. Yeah, I appreciate that. And I think we should just spell that out a little bit and talk about the nuts and bolts of what we do have in this company because we're extremely fortunate. 
Um, so just to focus firstly on the, on the advisory board, I got to give credit to Terry who put that program together and they developed that. I didn't know the story went all the way back. And maybe you heard this Kathy from, from Terry, but the story goes all the way back to when I forget what year it was. It was, uh, maybe 2014 after they expanded and they had frost and they, you know, they really had to dig deep to prove to themselves and the bankers and everybody involved in the farm that it was going to be viable. And they had to, you know, restructure a few things. I'm sure a lot of farm businesses have gone through this and I hope Terry won't mind me sharing this, but it's already out on the internet. So sorry, Terry, but um, they had to dig deep and that's when they got the, they got a board of advisors and they started doing projections and financial planning yearly and um so terry was really experienced when it came to advisory boards and he encouraged me to get one but i wasn't comfortable enough to do it myself i found it really hard i mean i did not have the courage to go and ask these you know really accomplished business people to be uh, our board of advisors and i think a lot of producers would struggle with that but the fact is that my brother went out and asked four incredibly accomplished respected yeah. successful Super yeah. successful. So we're asking the right people. I mean, these guys are super successful business people to be on our board. Um, we don't at this time compensate them financially now that, you know, we're getting to a certain place in the business. That's certainly something that we're talking about. Guys, your checks are on the way. Just kidding. Just kidding. Your <laughs> checks aren't on the way. But I sent you a book. Um, I have it somewhere here. I sent you a book on less, less Henry soil, soil health. I hope you appreciate that. No, but the guys, honestly, we kind of went around the room at the end of the advisory board. And I just, that's one thing I'd want every producer to understand. Like these guys, of course we could compensate them financially, but how do you, you know, we want to compensate them financially, but these are guys that are very, you know, financially astute and, and, and you know, money isn't the issue for them. I think they get a lot of value out of being part of a new company that's growing and giving back and networking with each other. You saw some of the the banter that was going back and forth amongst these guys like, Oh, you know, this guy, are you working on that? Or I'm consulting for this or, Oh, you know, they're making new connections and it's exciting for them to be a part of. But um, Jeff, you were down at the meeting, Kathy, we zoomed you in just like we're doing now. And the difference in like when we had the advisory board in San Francisco last year, I was, I was pretty depressed. Like I was literally in my hotel room li listening to like Lionel Richie in San Francisco after <laughs> the the advisory board because they don't tell you like i went in with my sham wow i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna do that and they're like do you want to be profitable or you want to be popular like take your pick and i was like well that's not doesn't make me feel good uh i don't really want to hear that they identified some major key areas that we had to look for in our business to work towards and handle the risk and stuff like that it wasn't sexy anything that they told us but the import of what they say and i never forget larry looking down his glasses, like yeah, exactly. he was saying yeah. to me, we will help you, Dan. We will help you. But if you don't take our advice, we're not going to help you anymore. You know? Right. Um, so anybody can do this though. Anybody can get someone that's ahead of them and anybody that's ahead of you in life. Like I would love, I don't know. I'd love to be in a position. If anybody asks me for help, I love that. I love if I can give back. It's one of my, my most, I'm probably less motivated by money than if somebody called me and said, I need your opinion on this. And I'd be like, in my opinion, you know, um, that's a great feeling. So, so yeah, that's one component. And I know you guys saw that in action. I don't know if you have, if you have any further comments on it, but I think the board of advisors was awesome. I think sometimes Dan, we just got to let down our ego. And you know what, there's been times when Jeff and I've had to reach out, you know, even though we are in this business of helping business, there's times when we've gone to our coaches and gone to advisors and had people help us because there is no one answer. It really is this collective minds will move something ahead far faster. You know, I, I'm really confident in my ability to go learn something. I can learn anything I, I set my mind to, but it comes down to how much time do you have? And I, I don't know, I look at it, if you can shortcut success, like, are you, are you more interested in the, the challenge or are you more interested in getting the result? And um, I think sometimes it's easy to get caught up in a, and, and that's where, as I said, you know, it, it, the advisors aren't there to have you sink. Advisors, you know, are there to have you succeed. They succeed when you succeed. And, and, you know, listening to what they have to say, being open, those kind of things. Um, 
yeah, if they've done what you've already, what you'd like to do, they know how to do it. <laughs> and, and chances are, if you think the idea they're telling you is a bad idea, you don't understand it. Yeah. Because right. they've been there, right? They've been there. So, no, I think it's really cool. Yeah, and if you've actually experienced those things and seen those things in business, I mean, you have a completely different perspective. And it's such such a dramatic difference between last year and this year's advisory board. And it was so enjoyable just to be down in Arizona, really relaxed. Mom and dad's new home, you know, they're doing so well. You know, that's a huge blessing. And, you know, I did a sales talk for the guys at Murray's, uh, guys and gals at Murray's this morning. And one of the things I was talking about is, you know, growing up on the farm, it wasn't, it didn't look like a great business because dad had worked all these side jobs, you know, well, I shouldn't say side jobs. We worked at the mine full time for 15 years. He worked crop insurance for five years. He worked at the dealership for seven years. He's managed the John Deere dealership for seven years mm-hmm. while farming, you know, but it was really Terry with the CEO mentality that said that like, Hey man, we got to, we got to, you got to come home and run this business and grow it with me. Mm-hmm. And they did that. And now I see, you know, dad still gets to hop in the semi and haul some grain. He was haul. I was out at the farm yesterday, but he's too busy to come see me. He's hauling grain. You know, there's a guy that likes yeah. doing that kind of stuff. But a lot of the time, they're riding the Harley in the winter uh, in Arizona, and he wouldn't be doing that if Terry hadn't had the balls to say, you know, we gotta we gotta really grow this business. So that's one aspect. I think the board of advisors is a little bit bigger picture. You guys are more nuts and bolts. So. Uh, we're highly invested with you guys in terms of your level of involvement. But I sense there's a lot of, lot of other levels of involvement that a business could have with you. Mm-hmm. But the way that I've been seeing that it's working and you guys can add to this is there's an element of like projects, strategic projects at times. And then there's an element of just like maintaining and running the business. And mm-hmm. Kathy, you do a lot of the projects. You come in and you identify like we have now done. We're on our fifth or sixth project, major right. project with you guys since september but that's also a function of hey i was in triage when i came and seen you guys mm-hmm. um and i don't know i already have some other projects for you guys <laughs> but there's the projects and then there's a the maintenance so talk about how you work with businesses and the projects and the maintenance and how you would assess someone coming in your door like say if a producer came in tomorrow and said i need your help how do you begin that process and what does it look like to me uh, i think yeah, there's two things to this. Um, regardless of the engagement, we're looking at return. We really want to see there's, you know, there's got to be some either tangible or intangible return. Sometimes it's money, but sometimes it's it's more um, capability, capability based. So it prepares the business for growth or for a change or whatever that might be. Um, you know, the front end, wh- whether it's a person or a business, we want to know where are you today? And how do we know you're there? How do you know you're there? What's going on in the business? What what are the beliefs and the values of the business? What's important? What's the business model? Um, How are you running the business relative to what the business model really is? Because oftentimes we're running a business as, um, we'll say a distributor business as a Marketing marketing business. We've had that discussion many times. We've had that talk. I always get out there. What are you, you know? um, Yeah. And so it's understanding where you are and then it's really digging in from there and going, where do you want to go? Right. And, and we talked about, or I talked about this at the applicator summit business and life is not that difficult. If you know where you are and where you want to go, as simple as it is, people forget Mm -hmm. about it. And I think we're, we are exceptionally good at, at figuring out where you are relative where you want to go and the path gets really simple then it doesn't mean there isn't work it doesn't mean there isn't habits that have to come in um so we're really good at figuring that out sometimes that's in the shape of a short-term project and then people are good to go and sometimes um there is enough noise in the system or challenge in the system that there's a benefit to having someone with you to go Nope, we're coming off course a little bit here. Stay straight ahead, straight ahead to keep things moving. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. One of the things we want to see is a return to the company because quite frankly, part of the reason we're in business is we want to make money and we think everyone should. Um, so when we do a good job of 
our work, it will create a benefit for you. And if we don't, we shouldn't be there. So that's, that's how we see it. The difference between short and long term really comes down to capability and need. What does the business need? What are the capabilities in the business? And are we a good fit? And at the end of the day, um, in some cases, do we enjoy it? And let's be honest, we love a lot of our clients. And when we, we, we want to be in those situations where at the end of the day, we look at it and go, that was a really great day. And I did the three, you know, the, the three most important things to me today were a part of my day. Yeah. And if we do that, we move the needle in our business. Absolutely. As well as your business. I always wondered if you guys, you know, with the superpowers that you have with running a business, why aren't you taking over the world with your own business? I mean, (laughs) Kathy's like, yeah, why aren't we? (laughs) Let's forget our own business. Let's go into the fertilizer business, Jeff. (laughs) You know what, Dan, here's the funny thing is I think, um, uh, and I, I, you know, I don't know if we're any different than anyone else, but I think Jeff and I kind of, you know, when we talk about our business, we took on kind of an interesting challenge um, because we went, we started in a market that doesn't broadly use the type of services we offer. It would have been far easier for us to go into Winnipeg or Calgary or something like that um, and, and do what we do uh, because they're just more used to the model. We have, uh, been diligent and in, in, in our messaging to uh, like to the small business owners we're not interested in both of us came from corporate worlds both of us um, understand that it would be a far easier you know I did a I did a three-day workshop last week uh, for Ducks Unlimited and uh, that's an easy sell you know but we do what we do because we really believe in the small guy Um, although we understand that they're kind of the most stubborn group out there. Uh, (laughs) um, But we know that there's so much potential with uh, small business owners to really, to be able to get their business to another level. And it's not necessary. What we do isn't something that's really mainstream yet. Uh, Although, you know, getting the chance to work with, you know, people like yourself, uh, you know, Sheila and John, we've just got a whole ton of them. And, And over, 11 years, you know, Jeff and I are running pretty full out these days and are going to continue to expand. But we were, we so believed in the market that we wanted to go after. And uh, maybe we're just stubborn. And I, and I, I as any entrepreneur, as any is. entrepreneur, but um, we believe in communities. We believe in business. We believe business is the backbone. Small business is the backbone of the prairies and Western Canada and even Eastern Canada. Yeah. Um, well, we can get down on ourselves, but the reality is you go to the Brandon Chamber of Commerce uh, event. There's a lot of amazing people working okay. really hard in all kinds of businesses here, right in Westman. Oh yeah. I think sometimes we shortchange ourselves, but you make a good point. Um, I don't think the thinking about coaching is where it's going to be in the future. I think coaching is going to get a lot bigger because I think, We've got this conundrum in life, right? Like if we go to the store and there's 15 jars of jam, it's very hard to narrow that jam down. And you just might leave the store having yeah. felt confused and frustrated that you couldn't narrow down your decision on a jam. Now, if you've got four or five jams to choose from, you know, and you've done some research on the internet and, uh, you know, as long as it's organic, um, it's gluten-free and it doesn't have any GMOs in it, you can get that, you can get that particular jam. But, right. um, Sometimes if you can just be presented to the one big jam at the Costco store that this is the way it is and simplify and clarifying it, people can move forward with that jam and have jam for a long time and not have to go back to the store. That's how I see your services is clarifying what, what jam to buy, if that makes any sense at all to anybody out there. Um, <laughs> I have no idea, but it sounded cool. And it probably makes a great gift, which is half of what this podcast is about. <laughs> at least 50% gifts. I know I'm doing something right. And then it's jam, 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 <laughs> Costco. It's all good. But how coachable am I on a scale of one to ten, guys? Oh, Dan. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Here's what I know about you. Oh, it's not a number. That's a political yeah, no, no, response. No, no, I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna get there. You are a nine out of ten in coachability. When you're in front of me. 
when I'm in front of it's you. Yeah. When you leave, it becomes unpredictable. Yeah. As soon as I leave your office, that's when things go south. <laughs> Very coachable so, in the 20 minute weekly sessions. Here's what I know is uh, for, for Dan, Dan Eberhardt, it has to align with the person that he is in the fabric that he is emotion in his emotions and his values. Yeah. If very emotional. There's no changing it. You're not coachable. And you know what? That's not a bad value to have. No, that's not a bad value. Well, you guys pick and choose your clients, right? Like you're not always working with people that, that don't get it or want it and can do it. Eh? To be fair. I mean, you no. fire some clients. Well, that's, that's, you know, uh, that's where it's nice being where we are today is, yeah. is we can actually pick and choose. Um, and you know, like we, we want, we want to feel good every day we come into work. We want to feel like we're making a difference. And, yeah. uh, when we can find those spots where we really feel we're making a difference, then that's what we want to do. You know, we've only, we're just like everybody else. We've only got so much time, so much effort, so much energy. And, um, you know, I, I think that we're pretty amazing at what we do. So I don't know why I would go and, put that in mediocrity. So I, I, I want people that want to do some really cool stuff and I like big problems to solve and uh, I like to be excited. So yeah, uh, it's kind of cool now where we are being able to choose and pick what we want to do. I like people that like my problems. That's pretty exceptional. <laughs> I, I just to add that down. The one, one thing I, I just have to add to that is Although at the same time, we're always open. We are always open to talking to, to business owners. And so whether we become, yeah. whether we work together or not is, is immaterial because on the front end we do, I, it's one of the things I tell Kathy every day. If I can talk to a new business owner every day, that's what really gets me excited and jazz. Cause I get to hear about what's going on in the world. I get to hear about their perspective on what's going on in the world. And for me, that ke- I, I feel like that keeps me really in touch with what's going on. So in those situations, I try to always add as much value back to that business owner that they could put into to play. Whether we work together or not, Doesn't it, it should be a value. It should be a value to them. And we, we believe we do a good job of that. Um, but we are, you know, I'm eternally grateful for, I never, you know, 10, 12 years of this to be able to be in the situation where everyone that comes through the door, we don't need to work with them, which is an interesting phenomenon because now that we don't need it, it's there more than ever, which is, which is really, I think speaks to some of the great clients we have because they've been willing to share the story just like you are today. And we're grateful, I think for those people in our lives who, um, you know, rather than hoard and hide, some of our capabilities, they're really willing to share that. And that is the entrepreneurial spirit in its essence. I think, you know, Dan, just to add to that is, you know, for example, there's certain, there's certain businesses that we just know are not in our bailiwick. Like um, it's not that we don't totally respect those owners. You know, I'll say that I, you know, we don't work with restaurants not because I don't love restaurants, but because it's just not where we see that we can really add a lot of benefit, but there wouldn't be a restaurant owner that couldn't knock on my door and say, can I sit down and have a half hour conversation with you or an hour long conversation where I wouldn't help them. Um, We don't generally work with startups, but it doesn't mean that I wouldn't sit down and talk to them. You know, Jeff and I are about building the business community. Yeah. We want to see every business owner succeed. The stats of business owners failing are so high, but it doesn't need to be that way. It doesn't need to be that way. I don't believe it needs to be that way. And so whether it's a conversation at a business after five or sitting down and having a coffee, we are absolutely willing to sit and talk to anyone about business. We love, we love what we do. And I think, um, like you said, sometimes it can be a lonely place. And so when you can find networks and anyone that's listening to your podcast, if they want to give us a call, uh, we'd be more than happy to talk to them. Even if it's a 45 minute, an hour, hour and a half, two hour conversation, and it doesn't go anywhere beyond that, it doesn't matter. It's, you know, our message is, is if you want to create something different, you got to do something different. And sometimes it's just a, it can be a conversation that can make all the difference. So yeah. What would you what would you say to people that might not feel like they want to or need to be coached in business? I think that one point I have in that this this is one that speaks to me over and over. Kathy and I both have our themes, and one in particular to me, Dan, was I had a business owner 
who came into me, uh, 65 years old, ready to retire and realized their business wasn't worth anything and had said to me, I did not listen to the people around me 15 years ago. And I wish I had. And so when I think, when I hear that, or when I see those, I think of this guy and what, and, and we see it more often than not in those situations where it's, 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 it's too late or it's not too late, but now he's got to add another five years to his working life when he didn't have to. And truly for me, that's my, I feel like that's my mission sometimes is when I see people in that situation, I go, it doesn't have to be that way. Talk to someone. I don't care who it is. No. Talk to someone about where you're going to be. Start looking out at where you're going to be. And is what you're doing today going to get you there? And be really honest. Just be really honest. Do you have doubts about financial security in the future or the growth of your business? Or, you know, is it keeping you up at night? Do you think it's, ever, you know, you ask yourself questions like, is it ever going to change? And the only thing that stops people from taking that step is being authentic with themselves first and then being able to talk about it. So I don't know if that answers the question directly, but I, every time I see that or hear that, I think of this situation and go a really awesome family, by the way, it was just such a great family. And to me, I felt like um, the family was robbed of time mm -hmm. with this, the dad, um, and they, and they were really, truly robbed of time. And he was so devastated that he wasn't able to go do what he wanted to with his family and grandkids at the time. And it just, it's uh, on an emo both a values level, emotional level and a belief level in what we do. I went, if I can stop that, if we can help that kind of situation, then we're doing the right thing. And, and, um, that's what drives me every day is that kind of situation. Can we make that kind of impact to change someone's life? I remember sitting at the Trusted Applicator Summit and I really wish I could remember the name of the gentleman I was talking to, um, but he was one of your trusted applicators. Mm -hmm. And I, I think he told me he was like 63 or 64 years old. And he said, you know, Kathy, uh, it's really funny because when I started farming 40 years ago, he goes, all I had to worry about was getting the seed in the ground yeah. and then coming along and, and, you know, yeah. combining it at the end of the day and pulling it back out. And he goes, that's all I had to worry about was those things. And he goes, and today I got to think about inputs and I got to think about, you know, fertilizers and I got to think about soil, you know, how the soil is. And he goes, you know, this is just, he goes, I know what it was to be a farmer. I don't know what it is, is to be an agronomist. I don't know all of this stuff. And he goes, I'm trying really hard to learn. And I think that's the thing is there's been so many businesses that have been created because somebody was so good at their trade and I'll call it a trade. So whether you're a bookkeeper, whether you're a farmer, whether you're, um, you know, an applicator, whether you're a, a lawyer or a doctor, right? We create our businesses because we're so good at the trade, but we don't give ourselves enough credit to understand there's the business of business. And so, yeah. you know, we don't go, you know, you know, look at like at Harvey, right? Harvey isn't sitting there and going like, I know anything about taxes. <laughs> right. I know anything about, you know, um, agronomy. Like, you know, I know what Terry does. Like, you know, there's so many different expertises today and, you know, oh. I think most business owners try to become everything rather than sitting there going, you know what, what am I good at? I'm going to have a, the best accountant I can get and let that accountant do what their job is because I know what I'm good at. I know what you're good at. And one of the things you always talk about is it's not about what it's about who, right? Who's your who's. And I think that's part of, you know, building a business, growing a business is it, you don't have to know everything yourself. You have to be able to find the who's and you got to find the who's that are going to push you. You got to find the who's that are going to help move something forward because that's when you can really move something. And I think that's the thing is, is there's so many guys that have spent so much time trying to be the who, like the who that does everything mm -hmm. that is at some point you run out of time because you're just one person. And 
when you can get a lot of people in behind you, you can create something pretty cool. Well, that's, that's my dad, uh, case in point, you know, and he is the ultimate jack of all trades. He can do everything under the farm and work a full-time job like nobody can, but it took Terry to drag him kicking and screaming into the concept of, Hey, let's, let's focus on running this, this business and think about it like a CEO kind of mindset. And I think it's, it's reaped a lot of rewards. And I think Harvey went from a guy that probably couldn't envision having a business coach, you know, when, you know, 20 years ago on his farm. To well, that's what he said. Now he's embracing this. Like he fills out the forms on these, we go to these advisory things and he's feeling out what's the purpose of this. What's the importance of this. And, there's a lot of belly aching for a long, long time. Well, and he, you know, I think good he's on eternally him grateful he now that we're doing all, all the boys are doing all this crazy shit. Yeah. They know he loves it. I would say even, and I would, I would, he's still, he's still, <laughs> because when I was at the board of advisor, your board of advisors meetings is everyone spoke, but I still say Harvey spoke at the end. He's the last word. He always will be, you know, as long as he's he, around. He he doesn't have a lot to say, but when he does, and I, I'm going to give I'm going to give Harvey credit because Harvey doesn't have a lot to say sometimes, but when he does, you're going to listen. Well, how the hell could anybody possibly get any words in edgewise in the presence of myself and Terry, especially Terry? <laughs> oh, are you picking on Terry? <laughs> It's just brutal. And then we'll have like a big meeting with a bunch of board of advisors there. And I was like, Hey bitch, you cut me off like three times. He's like, no, you cut me off. <laughs> He's like, can you, I'm like, can you let me finish my sentences? He's like, well, let me finish my sentences. <laughs> brothers, brothers, brothers. Oh, well, and I don't think anybody else really notices. Like sometimes we're bad at that because we finish people's thoughts or whatever. And we talk okay, a lot. Right. And, we're generally kind of uh, relatively harmless narcissists, but narcissists nonetheless. But, you know, <laughs> you guys are awesome. <laughs> it's fun. Eh? It's been so fun working together. What what kind of concerns me a little bit is, though, like, you know, I want to share this goodness with the world. But like you guys aren't that scalable. Like you guys are kind of special snowflakes. I'm just glad you landed somewhere in my uh, my playground. Um, mm -hmm. But there's not many of you doing what you're doing, is there? And it's hard to scale, isn't it? It's a little... It's a little bit of a challenge, but Jeff and I have been recently talking about uh, potentially some mastermind kind of activities in terms of bringing groups together, working in a different way. Um, I didn't get that memo. No, you didn't. I feel like yeah. I'm so out of loop here. Yeah. NLP oh, and masterminds. Oh what are you guys doing? I, I'm a platinum customer. This. The non-sharer just let the cat out of the bag. What is the going on? The oversharing business coach uh, on no. the Growing the Future podcast with Kathy Snellgrove. <laughs> you know what if this is this is true what kathy's saying but we've done this for years in terms of the workshop some of the mastermind stuff so it's never been fully in the picture it's always been something we've experimented with and used it for feedback from the business community and it's always been we always get this why are you not doing that all the time yeah. and it's not the timing's never really been been I think perfect for us right. been right for us. And we're now at a point where we believe in terms of business and accomplishment and um, results and some of the clients and network that it's time to look at some options yeah. like that. And so we are in the works right now. Kathy's got probably one of the best formats that I've seen, or, and we've been a part of a lot of them over the years for, a mastermind and there will be news coming you up. Buggers. That's why she's not taking my calls. <laughs> she's busy on the mastermind program that I didn't even hear about until I had to have a freaking podcast. Does between, you guys to hear about ten, she does that between 10 at night and four in the morning. <laughs> and then she goes to the gym. <laughs> oh, and then I work on your dealer strategy. And then she works on your dealer strategy. Yeah. This epic dealer strategy. I got a, how long is that pamphlet? It just opens up like an accordion. It's like four oh, feet long. You're going to be busy, man. You're going to be have a lot of reading to do. You mean who's going to be busy? Because I'm not doing it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have so much I got to talk to you guys, too, about the actual business besides doing this podcast. But, um, you know, in terms of what's possible, like changing our beliefs about what's possible 
And I really need to get you guys to work with me long term because, you know, the company is a reflection of the individual. Mm-hmm. And let's just say, let's just have a come to Jesus moment here live on the internet. Well, it's not live, it's recorded. So I can edit this out if I have second thoughts. Na, 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 na. <laughs> but I have been known to maybe, would you guys say gently that I have a proclivity for spending money? <laughs> maybe a little bit. <laughs> You know, and I think it's like a function of this circular economy. I just want to, you know, I'm just generous. I want to keep everything going. But it's like um, changing those beliefs about just retaining money in my life long term and letting it build. That's a big thing I'm working through. But I, I feel like there's so much that's possible now working with you guys. Uh, Kathy, if you could tell the story of going from 27 days to three days. I think that illustrates it's a lot of a great theme for you guys about imagining what's possible, having done it yourself. Sure. So um, I used to work for a Boeing company in Winnipeg. And uh, as one of the roles that I had in Winnipeg was I was a senior manufacturing manager. And Boeing's a really great company to work with. They've got uh, lots of resources available. And so I was in Winnipeg. I had these shops that were in the middle of the plant. So I had a there was a layup shop and then there was an assembly plant and I had all the departments in between. And, uh, you know, we knew that we needed to bring down the cycle time. So how long a part took from the beginning of my shop through to the back end. And, and we knew we actually had to get our cycle time down. So we had a gentleman, his name was Bill Sanders. He came and he sat down with us and I was a senior person in the thing. So I had my engineers and we're all sitting in this big room and, And Bill comes in and he says, you know, we're going to be working together to bring down your cycle time. You know, I think it's really important that we set a target. Now, until that point, we had been at 24 days. And so it took 24 days to come through. And so, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, okay, well, if we got to like three, like 24, like if I took, got to 21 days, that would be a pretty good improvement. And so anyway, Bill listens to us and I, I describe this for my team. I say, okay, I think if we get to 21, that'd be great. And Bill says, well, what about three? And I remember actually thinking in, the mo- in that moment, thinking about the mental math going, well, yeah, 24 minus three is 21. We're in the same. <laughs> and, and Bill going, no, actually, I mean three days. And I went, well, hang on. So at that point, the whole entourage of us, and there's probably 20 of us or so that were in the room because Winnipeg had about 1,500 people at the time. There's about 20 of us and we go and we, I say, you know, Bill, let's go for a walk through the shop and I'll show you, I'll show you show how it is how right? it is, and all this stuff. And he, he goes, okay, sure. So we go for this big long tour through the shop and he comes back and he says, okay, so what do you think the target should be? And I said, well, you know, like if we got to 18 days, like that's a quarter. Like that was a lot. Like that was like, okay. So in the end he goes, yeah. Um, how about three? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, okay, you don't really understand aerospace. Like we've got rules and regulations. We've got department of transportation. Like, okay. So at this point I bring out my guns, I bring out all my engineers and I say, okay, so start explaining this. And And Bill listens patiently through the whole thing. And he goes, okay, so what do you think the target should be? And I say, well, you know, if we got to like 14 days, right? 12 to 14 day kind of thing. Like that's like, we're talking 50% reduction. And, and he goes, "Um, okay. um, How about three? (laughs) So anyway, we continue going back and forth and we're back and forth, back and forth. And this kind of happens over an entire day. And so it's about three thirty, four o'clock, and my my we started pretty early there. My staff is all got to go home, and it's going to just be Bill and I. And so Bill and I are going to go through the tough negotiations. And um, so we're back and forth, and I'm saying, Bill, you know, I can't I can't sign up to something that's totally impossible. Like it just uh, it's it's totally unrealistic to think we're ever going to three days. And I had all of my reasons and all of the, you know, all of the rationale that said it was never going to happen. And people that don't know me, or if you didn't know me, you'd know that I, I really do love pen and pencil sets. And so anyway, Bill's sitting there and I have it all day long. I had been watching, you know, cause he came from the States and, and he had this most amazing pen and pencil set. And I remember sitting there and admiring it all day long going, Oh my God, is that ever nice? Um, 
and off the cuff had said to him, well, fine, if we get to three days, I want your pen and pencil set. And he went done. And I went, no, 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 no. I didn't agree to that. And he said, no, you did actually, you agreed to it. And when, and if we get to three days, I'll give you my pen and pencil set. The funny thing on that one, Dan, was like the next day I had three shifts of people. I had about 300 people, 350 people working in my departments at that time. And I remember the next day going and talking to my staff about how we had just committed to getting to three days when we were really at 24. And I remember thinking how absolutely nuts people were going to think I was like, you know, I had, I had all the images in my head and, um, over the next six months, you know, those 300 people worked their asses off and I give them the credit because they're the ones that came up with the ideas and they're the ones that went and really uh, questioned why things were the way they were. We moved around locations. We moved around floor plans. We changed how we were managing tools. You name it. We changed everything. And over the next six months, uh, we ended up getting to 3.2 days of cycle time. And, you know, I guess at that, like that exercise, and I tell that story a lot, but I tell it from the vantage point of is, you know, if you think you have to have all the answers, like you just really haven't accessed what's really potentially possible. Like there were 300 people coming up with different ideas about how we could get to that goal. The other thing was, is that, you know, big goals inspire people in different ways. And I thought there was going to be a whole ton of people that were going to come back and go, oh my God, you're crazy. This is never going to happen. What are you thinking? You know, blah, blah, blah. And actually it was in fact, the opposite is people went, this is cool. Like this is something that's really cool. And it wasn't like any one person had the answer. I didn't have to have all the answers. In fact, when I didn't have an answer, it was better because somebody could come and push me out of what I'd been thinking. And uh, what our group was thinking, you know, I never dreamt that you could go talk to the Department of Transportation and get them to change their regulations. I didn't even think of that, but I had an engineer that did. And I think, you know, we think that change is tough, but the reality is, is that little change is tough because yes. we never have to change our beliefs to get a little, to mm-hmm. work a little bit harder doing the same thing. I have to work harder, but if I can change what I believe, if I can change if I'm willing to be open to something different, I can create something way different and it'll be way easier than I thought. And so, and if you can be open to that, there'll always be lots of people there to join in and help. Oh yeah. So that's the story of three. You guys know, you guys understand that in the moral of this story in this parable, like you are now bill and I am now, and you owe me a pen and pencil set. Anytime. (laughs) <laughs> Jeff, you watched that fire festival. Is it a lot like dealing with me? Um, I'm on my own island that I got from Pablo Escobar and I'm having a big party and uh, we're shipping a bunch of people down. You're like, whoa, we don't have enough pissers. <laughs> uh, We've only got FEMA tents. That one might have went off the rails a little bit when it became so big he couldn't fail and he couldn't listen to anyone around him. Yeah. He did not listen to anyone. Yeah, he did, eh? That's one of the big, you know, I kind of watched that and I kind of felt horrified initially because I felt like I was watching this this guy who was planning this big festival and he just had such passion and, and it was just so over the top. Like you couldn't hardly deny it, but get swept up in the in the mentality and the currency of, of influence, right? Um, and having influencers influence the influencers and just the, the herd mentality, like just amazing marketing chops. Mm -hmm. But where I got a disconnect with this particular individual is not being able to take good advice and not having the right people around him. And I'd hate to have that. I'd hate to be in that situation where you're still charging down the hill, but your whole army knows it's a lost cause. It's just not possible. I'd never want to be that that leader and you guys will make sure I'm not, I don't turn this into a a fire festival ever. Well, you know what, Mr. Dan, this is what I'd say is, is if we ever thought you were turning it into a fire festival, you wouldn't see us around you. (laughs) (laughs) Well, 
I get that feeling on Monday morning sometimes, like, hey, let's have a fire festival. But then I'm like, no, no, okay, just wait. We gotta talk to Sierra here. The reality is, is that, um, uh, you know, and we've run into a couple cases where we've had, you know, people that um, were creating a fire festival. And, you know, one of the things that Jeff and I believe in at the end of the day is, is I want to be able to get up every morning and look in the mirror and know that I have done the best that I can do. And I think um, sometimes people, you know, will run amok, but uh, integrity is important. And I know integrity is important for you guys. Uh, I yes. know it's important in your entire um, trusted applicator group, uh, everything that you guys are creating. Uh, I see that in you and Terry and Harvey and all your advisors. And sure, I think we all want to see success. And, and but I think we want to do it in a way that uh, is good for the world, good for the people that's around us, our families and our friends. And so I don't think we ever really have to worry about a fire festival, man. You and, know, kind of and, a fun concept though. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe we'll make one that works. It's kind of like watching love a train wreck, huh? <laughs> you know, well, I, yeah. I, love, I love the idea of great marketing and moving people. And I think that's what you're talking about in terms of potential, right? Is to move. Yeah. People. But I think you can move people to a common goal and some pretty amazing accomplishments. And, one of the things that Kathy and I have become really clear over 12 years in is the work we do every day becomes a part of our beliefs and becomes a part of our values and eventually becomes a part of our brand and how people see us. And we work long and hard to create that. And I think we have the moral compass along with that, that, yeah. um, you know, that's how we want it. That, Hey, if there's anything in common with people as well, we want to be remembered for something, right. And create an impact and legacy. Um, we want to be, yeah. Legacy. So yeah. that's a big, a big thing for us. And when people talk about Sear or, or Kathy or Jeff um, at the end of the day, you know, we, we, we understand they may say, man, they really pushed me hard, but I knew they cared. Yeah. But I knew they cared. And that's, that's a big part of what we do. Love it. So mm -hmm. two more points here before we wrap up. The first is talk to me, talk to me now, talk to me about your track record. You've had really good luck helping businesses. It's not, it's luck. not luck. No. But talk to me about your track record. Tell us about your track record. What are you talking about? Are you talking numbers? Are you talking? No. About well, whatever metrics you think are important, but you, the businesses that you work with are, are successful and you've only had a few that you wave the white flag on ever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that uh, without a doubt, any one of the people that worked with us have said that there's been a, you know, a, a fundamental shift in their business that has allowed them to go on and achieve uh, results that they wouldn't have inspected, expected. I think on average, um, you know, first year, we're probably looking at somewhere, you know, at 23 to 27% growth on average. I think that uh, we have clients that have been with us for nine years um, because they see the value in it year over year. I believe that um, we have helped businesses, some businesses to really shift uh, in, in, you know, triple uh quadruple their companies in terms of the size. Um, I think the, one of the things aside from the money is when, you know, what I love to hear is I love to hear the business owner that says, you know, I can go and spend time with my kids uh, watching their, their hockey game and their soccer games. And I can spend time with my family and I can go on vacation and, uh, I can go and enjoy life because I really believe business is really there to do that. It's one thing to go make money, but if After at the that, end of the day, do? yeah. So, uh, I think we have a lot of business owners that would tell us aside from the financial win in working with us, there's also a clarity, a calmness, a focus, a, um, at the end of the day, we want to work when we work with business owners and they get to answer the question about what's really, really important to them. As Kathy said, if it's getting to their kids soccer game, if it's getting, you know, that time in the winter to get away with their family, 
um, and spend the quality time. It's those little niggly things. At the end of the day, we're all people. And we ask questions like, was I a good dad? Yes, it's huge. Was I, did I contribute to my community? Did I, you know, am I, did I, am I building significance in who I am through the impact I'm having? Whatever that is. Um, Monetary seems to be the early thing. And I'll tell you the businesses that are with us for eight years shift and morph. And we see them giving back massively into the community. And, um, and that I think is part of the fabric. Um, But it's part of who entrepreneurs are. And that's, why I'm grateful for what we get to do every day. So, yeah. So while, uh, you know, I think sometimes people will talk about our track record, um, you know, I'm so confident in our, in our ability on that mechanical side of running a business, but there's something that is so hard to quantify on the other side. Mm-hmm. Um, when someone can feel like I finally feel successful in this business. Cause I think, it's easy for any business owner, like you talked about earlier, is that you, you know, we have our doubts and our struggles and all that kind of stuff. But when all of a sudden it's like, I feel better. You, you've talked about it, Dan. You've talked about how it's like, I feel better. I feel more in control. I feel more confident about what I'm doing. I feel like I know what it has to happen. And I don't know how you put a dollar figure on that, but it totally changes your psyche. It totally changes. Um, how you see the world and it's not just in your business. It's how you see the world in general. And I don't know. Yeah. There's the number side of it. And, and we talk about the return on investment, but that's the side that I don't know how you quantify, but to me is like, to me, that's the, that's the secret sauce. Yeah. For me, how I quantify it as yeah. a business owner that's highly invested in partnering with you guys is because you've had such an exemplary track record in those moments of doubt, I can rest assured that of the best possible people at the helm uh, working with me and that very few businesses that you've worked with consistently that will actually take your advice have failed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, having some of that, that courage and the confidence, removing that, that level of, of self doubt is, is pretty critical to be able to move forward and take action. And without, you know, proper clarity, it's very hard to move forward. Um, if you were to speak directly to someone that was where I was in September right now, whether, you know, it's a producer or somebody in the ag biz world or any business, I guess, what would you say to them where they are right now about, about how you could help them and why they should come see you? One I'd say it's, time. Not, it's not your fault, but it's your responsibility. Mm. Back your business, to your employees, to your family, whatever that is. It's not your fault because cycles in business occur and you're going to experience them, whether you're at $500,000 or $25 million or $180 million. The challenges are going to be there as you grow and they're going to change as you grow. So it's not your fault. It's part of the, it's part of the matrix you're in but it's your responsibility to figure it out wherever that is. And that responsibility, I think that's what part of that drive is that responsibility is really back to Mm. those people you serve or those responsibilities as a business owner. When people work for you, they put food on the table because of you or not because of you, because of the work they can do with you. And I think that we owe it as business owners to our communities and just to be in a country where we can do these great things. Right. Yeah. Um, we have a responsibility to figure it out. I love that a lot. Is that in your book or did you just come up with that or what's the deal? No, it's, it's not it's, your fault. That's but what I your believe. responsibility. It's not that's your fault. Big... It's your responsibility. Yeah. 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 Totally. We believe that. We believe that. We talk about that all the time. Sometimes it's their fault though. No, it's actually, you know, and I think we t- started off the very first part of this was, is, you know, I think any one of us is doing the best we can in this moment. Yeah. Right, you know, right. none, of us, none of us really, you know, when you get in a tough spot, it's not like you can actually pinpoint it to one thing. Uh, we like to, but it's, it's, you know, it kind of happens. And sometimes from those, like, and that's what I'd say is sometimes the worst points that you get is if you're open and you stick with that idea that it's not your fault, but it's your responsibility 
then you can change it. And that one moment can become the best thing that's ever happened to you. I didn't go back Um, to Larry Hiller's conversation with you, Dan. You You had a choice right there, right? Larry said whatever he said that was so monumental to you. And you made a choice in that moment. And you have a great staff working for you. You're yeah. making, you know, you're impacting across the prairies. Um, you made a choice. Some and of we're our just big, getting started. Some mm-hmm. of our biggest success comes from some of our deepest moments. Oh, yeah. And I think that, you know, that's when, when we say it's not, it's not about how you got there or what happened or whatever. But in that moment, when it, feels, yeah. when it feels like it's just it's kind of sucks when you get to that moment, it's what you do next. And that's where it's your responsibility. It doesn't matter what's happened to get you where you are. It's really, what are you going to do after? And it always feels better to take responsibility at the end of the day. Like it always feels better to own it and take action. Once you've got clarity on what it is you need to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I really hope that this message reaches a lot of uh, people in the agricultural community out there because I know it's not easy for them. And, you know, I guess as a business owner, I've experienced my own ups and downs. And one thing I've found in life is everything's relative. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, and if you're at that point where you're ready to take that, to take that leap, to be coached, get ready for what could be possible in your life. I feel like we've got traction. I feel like we've got clarity. I feel like we're on the spectrum of nurse back to health and, and getting healthier all the time. And we can start talking about micronutrients and, you know, doing uh, all kinds of, of fancy higher functioning things in business because of, of where we got to. I love you guys so much. You become <laughs> best friends of mine. You become very important people in my life. And I thank you for everything you've done for us. Like you helped us through some pretty tough spots and I'm excited to move forward with this fire festival thing we've been talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Let's blow this up. Let's buy an island. Uh, it's buy awesome. Island. It's so fun. And let's keep doing it. Like, what can we do now? Like, with you guys in my corner, what can we do now? Like, let's blow it up. And Absolutely. everybody that wants to come with us. And I was really excited to have you guys on the podcast because I like fitness or faith like some of the best things in life. I wanted to share this goodness in my life with, you know, our millions of viewers. (laughs) Soon. Soon, yeah. Well, we're getting a little bit more of likes and followers every day, but that's not, I don't really care. No. I just love doing this. Like we, we would have had a really good conversation if I came over for two and a half hours today about things that actually make us money, not cost us money like the podcast. (laughs) But at the same time, like, would we have had this quality of conversation? We are where we are because of these connections that we have. And there's something about doing the podcast with everybody I do this podcast with. The connection is is just awesome. And it's like those relationships get so much richer. So anyways, now I should come over and we should actually talk about some business stuff. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Get the book. The book is... It is what it is, or is it dot, 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 all about business by uh, Kathy Snellgrove and, and Jeff Rossi, some of the best damn business advisors you ever uh, have the pleasure to work with if you if you take that monumental move in your life and your business. Thanks for everything you guys do. Thank you. I know Harvey and Terry, you're probably right up there in their favorite people in their Rolodex because you finally got big brother Dan under control. <laughs> We love the Amber Hearts. We love the Amber Hearts, <laughs> but listen, listen. Uh, You're the most important neighbor heart. I'm the most important neighbor heart, finally. No, no mom. mom. Mom is the most. Oh, important. mom is. Because without oh. mom, you don't exist, my friend. You don't exist. That's a really weird uh, back to the future type statement that we <laughs> have to like, explore over beer someday. <laughs> <laughs> So much gratitude um, to the Aberhart family, Dan. Absolutely. And, oh, and awesome. Aberhart A. You're part of that. You guys, well, you are, you're part of that. You're not really going to be part of the inheritance, I don't think. But did, we could tie your perform, you know, performance <laughs> to the inheritance. If you can enhance my inheritance, you can have a big chunk of it. I don't care. <laughs> I just have to get Harvey to, Harvey to adopt me. 
<laughs> I don't think you guys are far off. And you know who's the big deal too is like Larry. Larry loves you guys. Oh, <laughs> like I got a big complimentary text after the advisory board. You know, I think they were really, really impressed and blown away. And those guys, uh, I mean, they they know right away. They can sniff it. They can sniff it out pretty quick that whether it's the real thing or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's really exciting what's what's all happening and. I've got new opportunities for you guys to help me with um, that I'm really excited about that I can't reveal on this podcast because of NDAs and silly little things like that. But <laughs> good stuff, good stuff coming. Opening heard egg powered by Sear. Network's going what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. My poor dealer what? network. Sometimes yeah. they're like, "Oh, Aberhart's on another tangent. Can we just focus on Biosol here?" Don't worry, we'll keep it all under control. <laughs> you got you. Okay, love you guys. Thanks right. for everything. And um, thanks so much, Dan. This it was has been, it's been awesome. So it's been a lot great. of fun, eh? Yeah, really okay. a lot of fun to sit. Get ready for uh, watching your uh, your beautiful mugs there uh, day after day in the month of uh, in June. In June, yeah. eh? Posting yeah. the highlights, and I expect that uh, your ninety thousand followers are going to really appreciate it. Oh yes, <laughs> I told Terry <laughs> yesterday. Followers, well, that must be it. That's it. Uh, no, I never had any ulterior motives. <laughs> it's totally okay if you do. I'm not leveraging your Twitter I audience expect, for my own gain. I'm not going to monetize my podcast through all all your or your audience and your users. No much. All good. Um, so go get a message out there, Dan. It is. You have a great one. Inspiring. It has Keep been an inspiring up. moment. I'm I'm really inspired. So inspired, Farmers I probably need some lunch. Fixing the world's problems. Love it. Farmers fixing the world's problems. Love it. Okay, Love guys. It. We'll have a great day. We'll appreciate you coming on the podcast. Keep it real. Okay. Talk to you soon. Talk to you soon, Dan. Bye. Bye for now.